thank you so much for your uh, patience with us this Sunday morning in the midst of experiencing technical difficulties. God is still good and he is worthy to be praised. Amen, amen, and amen. Our ensemble is going to bless us at this time with uh, two selections and then we will hear from God this Sunday morning.
ship of thy own. Till the old ship of thy own. Till the old ship of chapter 14 commencing with verse 10 concluding with verse number 20 to hear ye the word of God the word of God says this and when Pharaoh uh, drew nigh the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid uh, the Bible says the children of Israel cried unto the Lord and they said unto Moses because there were no graves in Egypt hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt saying let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness and Moses said unto the people fear not stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show you today for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today ye shall see them again no more forever the Lord shall fight for you the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace and the Lord said unto Moses wherefore criest thou unto me speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward but lift thou up thy rod stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea and I behold I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians they shall follow them and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts upon his chariots and upon his horsemen and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh and upon his
his chariots, upon his horsemen. And verse number 19 says this, And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face, stood behind them, and it came to pass between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord called the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the word of God concludes by saying in verse 22, the children of Israel uh, went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Lord have mercy Jesus. I want to I want to tag this text and talk about this Sunday morning uh, when you can't go any further. Lord have mercy Jesus when you can't go any further. What do you do when it seems as though you can't go any further? My God from Zion, when you cannot go any further. Uh, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I've discovered that this life that you and I are living is a life that is oftentimes confusing, perplexing, and sometimes puzzling. Talk to me somebody. The truth be told, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, when you look at the life that we live, I have discovered and I declare that this life that you and I are living is a life that can be defined as being confusing, perplexing, and even puzzling. Confusing because you really don't know what God is doing. Perplexing because you really can't see how God is moving and puzzling because you really don't know how God will call situations to work together for your good. This life, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, this life that we are living is a life that is confusing, puzzling, and perplexing. And the truth of the matter is all we as believers can do is simply walk by faith. Talk to me somebody. This, this Christian journey is a faith journey. Have I got a witness here? This, this Christian life is a faith journey. That's why the Apostle Paul writes in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 7. Paul says this, we walk by faith and not by sight. This Christian journey, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is a faith journey because the truth of the matter is our focus does not lie in that which we see, but our focus lies on that which we don't see. Have I got a witness here? I focus and your focus ought not necessarily lie on that which we know, but the truth of the matter is sometimes our focus focus lies in that which we don't know. Our focus is not necessarily on what appears to be, but the Bible says our focus lies on what shall be. We walk by faith and not by sight. And I need to help somebody this Sunday morning when I tell you, because we do not know what lies ahead, because we do not know what the future hold because we do not know what's around the corner. Sometimes it feels as though you just can't go any further. 
Has anybody been there besides Tobiah this Sunday morning? The truth of the matter is because of the weight of the world, because of the pressure from people, because of our daily dilemmas, sometimes in this life, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you feel as though you can't go any further. Let me help somebody here this Sunday morning. That, that single mother who's trying to raise that child by herself, sometimes uh, she feels as though she can't go any further. Though Those parents who are trying and who are dealing with a hard-headed child, sometimes they feel as though they can't go any further. Sometimes uh, that spouse who wants to give up on that marriage uh, and head to divorce court, sometimes they feel as though they can't go any further. That Christian uh, who finds it extremely difficult and hard uh, to hear from God, uh, sometimes in this life they feel as though they can't go any further. What do you do when you feel like you can't go any further? Has anybody been there besides somebody? Else? I'm a living witness, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Every so often, every now and then in this life, because of the weight of the world, because of the pressure from people, because of your daily dilemmas, every now and then, all of us will feel in our spirit, deep down in our soul, that we can't go any further. Let me help somebody here this Sunday morning. Let, let me let me show you what happens to us in this text or in the context of this passage of scripture as to what the people of God will do when it seems as though we can't go any further. In this text, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, you would discover um, that Moses is a man uh, on a mission for the master um, uh, who migrates from the land of Median. And the Bible will show you that Moses, you, you you remember Moses, don't you? The Bible will show you it was Moses who was brought out of a basket. It was Moses who was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. It was Moses uh, who killed an Egyptian. It was Moses uh, who stood by a burning bush, but the bush didn't burn. It was Moses uh, who had a stick and a stutter. The text will show you that Moses uh, has now encountered a problem. Matter of fact, you ought to tell somebody this Sunday morning, he's an encountered a problem and this is his problem ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters his problem is he is now trying to lead God's people forward but some of the people have a desire to go back Lord have mercy Jesus the Bible will show you that Moses has now encountered a problem and the problem is this he is trying to lead God's people forward he's trying to lead God's people across the Red Sea he's trying to lead God's people to the promised land he's trying to get God's people where God wants him to be but the problem is some of the people they now have developed a desire they develop a mindset and they have a tendency or a desire to go back. And I need to help somebody here this Sunday morning when I tell you that Moses has encountered the problem. And I think I need to tell you that God never promised uh, the children of Israel when they left Egypt uh, that Pharaoh would not pursue them. Can I bless somebody this Sunday morning? God, God, God never promised the children of Israel when they left Egypt that Pharaoh wouldn't be on their track. He didn't promise them uh, that Pharaoh wouldn't follow them, but he did promise them uh, that wherever he led them, uh, wherever he sent them, uh, wherever he directed them, uh, he did promise them uh, that he would be with them. Can I bless somebody this Sunday morning? That's the word. I don't know who that word is for, but that's a word for somebody this Sunday morning. Hear me and hear me well this first Sunday when I tell you that God never promised you that you wouldn't have any bad days. 
can I bless somebody here this Sunday morning God, God never promised you that the rain would not fall in your life uh, he didn't promise you uh, that people and predicaments wouldn't get on your nerve he never promised you uh, that the road will be easy uh, but I don't know how you feel about it this Sunday morning but my testimony is uh, even though he didn't promise me that the road will be easy I just don't believe uh, that he brought me this far to leave me now I wish I had somebody who was going to type amen right there. Even though the road may be rough, even though he didn't promise you uh, that this life would be a bed of roses, uh, you ought to know without a shadow of a doubt uh, that wherever he leaves you, uh, you know that he's not going to leave you. Uh, and the children of Israel have a desire to go back uh, because they are fearful, uh, they are frightened, uh, they are afraid and they feel as though they can't go any further. Let me help somebody here this Sunday morning. Let me show you in the text what will happen, develop or unfold in people's life when they feel as though they can't go any further. Well, the first thing the text will show you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is that when the children of Israel felt like they couldn't go any further because the Red Sea was ahead of them, Pharaoh's army was behind them, mountains on the side of them, the Bible will show you that because they felt as though they couldn't go any further, the first thing the text will show you is that they began to weep in fear. Lord have mercy Jesus when we feel as though we cannot go any further when we feel like life is too difficult when we feel like the weight of the world is upon our shoulder when we feel like we don't have enough to make ends meet when we feel like God is not going to heal us of our various sickness disease or evil illness when we can't figure out how God is going to work things out many of us will do the same thing the children of Israel did and we will weep in fear talk to me somebody the Bible says when it seemed as though they couldn't go any further many of them began to weep in fear look at what the Bible says ladies and gentlemen it's right there in verse number 10 because the Bible says that when Pharaoh drew nigh unto the children of Israel they lifted up their eyes Behold, the Egyptians marched behind them. They were so afraid. They were so afraid. And the Bible says uh, they began to cry out loud to the Lord. To tell somebody this Sunday morning, they began to weep in fear. Matter of fact, you ought to tell somebody this Sunday morning, you ought not weep in fear. If I would have been there, I would have told the children of Israel, you ought not weep in fear. Why? Because Oh, you've already seen the God we serve do wonders. You've already seen the, the God we serve go to work. I mean, they saw God uh, bring plagues upon Egypt. Uh, they saw him uh, turn water to blood. They saw him uh, cause frogs and lice to live uh, on the land. They saw him uh, cause flies to fly ferociously. They saw him uh, send a deadly disease uh, upon the cattle in the field. They saw him uh, cause bars and bumps to break out over the skin of the people. They they saw him send a hailstorm uh, that fell from heaven. They saw him cause darkness uh, to dance a jig on, on the face of the earth. They saw him uh, cause death of the firstborn son uh, in the land of Egypt. Uh, and now uh, when they hit a bump in the road, uh, the Bible says they began to weep in fear. And you ought to tell somebody this Sunday morning to stop weeping in fear. 
I don't know who that word is for, but that's going to bless somebody this Sunday morning. Now, if you have already seen the God we serve uh, go to work, if you've already seen the God we serve uh, cause miracles to be manifested uh, right before your face, uh, when it seems like you hit a dead end, uh, when it seems like you hit a bump in the road, uh, I come to tell you this Sunday morning, uh, there's no need to weep in fear. That's why, that's why, ladies and gentlemen, that's why I had Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, if my mind serves me correctly, right around verse 39 and verse number 40, the Bible said that Jesus said to his disciples, why are you so fearful? Why are you so afraid? How is it that you have no faith? Can I tell somebody what fear is this Sunday morning? I don't want to tear it too long on point number one, but let me tell you what fear is, ladies and gentlemen. Fear is one of the worst nightmares uh, that one can face uh, as they journey through this world. Uh, fear will cause people to do all sorts of things. Fear will cause people uh, to worry about their money. Uh, it'll cause people uh, to fight among themselves. Uh, it'll cause people uh, to be overly concerned about their appearance. Uh, it'll cause people uh, to isolate themselves. Uh, it'll make people become physically sick. Uh, fear uh, will cause people uh, to ignore uh, the voice of God. Uh, it'll make people uh, to make rush uh, or hurried decisions. Uh, it'll cause people uh, to steal. Uh, fear will cause people to lie, you ought to ask Abraham. Uh, fear will cause people to cheat, uh, to fight, uh, and even kill. Uh, fear will cause you to do many things. And I'm trying to tell somebody this Sunday morning, you ought to be happy this Sunday morning. You ought to be shouting this Sunday morning. You ought to be ecstatic this Sunday morning because I've discovered in these 45 years of living that no matter the problem you face, no matter the problem that confronts you, God's message is still the same. God's message remains the same and God's message to the people of God is simply to fear not. Matter of fact, you ought to look over and tell somebody this Sunday morning, fear not. The problem may be bankruptcy. Your problem may be unemployment. Your problem might be financial difficulties, a severe relationship. It may be a family problem. It might be conflict, uh, disease, uh, or even dealing with the devil himself. Uh, it may be a horrible accident. Uh, it might be losing a loved one. Uh, but God's message this Sunday morning uh, is still the same. Uh, and he told me to tell somebody this Sunday morning uh, to fear not. <laughs> Matter of fact, you ought to tell somebody to fear not. Fear not. But, but not only, ladies and gentlemen, have I discovered that when we seem as though we can't go any further, not only is the text tailored to teach you that the children of Israel began to weep in fear, but I like this this Sunday morning. I like, I like what Moses tells the people through the word of God. He tells them, he says, listen, there's no need to fear because when it seems as though life hits a dead end, when it seems as though we can't go any Father, not only does the Bible show you that they begin to weep in fear, but watch the text. This is going to bless you this Sunday morning. Not only did they begin to weep in fear, but the Bible says they then began to walk in faith. Lord have mercy Jesus not only did they weep in fear but I like this ladies and gentlemen because the Bible says uh, after they heard from God they moved from weeping in fear to walking in faith it's right there 
is right there, ladies and gentlemen, in verse 15 and verse 16. Watch what the Bible says as they begin to walk in faith. Because the Bible says, and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? This is what God tells Moses. He says, speak unto the children of Israel that they move forward. Look over and tell somebody this Sunday morning, you've got to move forward. But lift up thy rod that is in your hand. God, God, God says this, stretch out thy hand over the Red Sea and divide it. And the Bible says that the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. This is what God said, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say it in, in, in plain English this Sunday morning. God, God tells Moses, he says, stop weeping, stop crying, stop pouting, stop praying, and start walking in faith. Can, can I bless somebody this Sunday morning? In faith, this is going to bless somebody. Hear me this Sunday morning when I tell you, in facing any problem, I think I need to tell you, there's a time for praying, there's a time for crying, there's a time for studying, there's time for analyzing the situation but after you get through crying after you get through praying after you get through studying after you get through analyzing after you get through praying you need to start walking in faith can, can I bless somebody this Sunday morning in facing any problem? That, that's a time, Ecclesiastes will tell you, that's a time for all things. But after you get done crying, after you get done praying, after you get through studying this situation, analyzing the problem, there's a time to pick up your bags and start moving forward. My God from Zion, tell somebody this Sunday morning, we've got to start moving forward. And, and I like this, I'm almost done here this Sunday morning, because that, that comes a time, some of the children of Israel, you know, when you read the text and study the text, the Bible will show you, they started to use the blame game. Can I bless somebody this Sunday morning? They started to blame and put the fault on Moses. You know what they said. Had you not brought us out of Egypt, have you not brought us? If you would not have brought us out here in the wilderness, we wouldn't be able to die out here. At least we would have had a decent burial or funeral in Egypt. They started to use the blame game. And I come to tell somebody before I get too happy this Sunday morning, there comes a time uh, when you have to stop blaming other people. Uh, you've got to make stop making excuses. Uh, stop accusing others uh, and make up in your mind. Uh, even though it looks like I can't go any further. Uh, even though it looks like I've hit a dead end. Uh, the Red Sea before me. Uh, the Egyptian army behind me and mountains on the side of me I've made up in my mind that I'm gonna trust God and move forward look what happens I'm almost done ladies and gentlemen look what happens when they make up their mind to move forward the Bible says that God gave them two things to tell, tell your neighbor God will give you something when you move forward well I hear somebody say well what did God give them it's in the text the Bible says that God gave them two things he gave them a win and he also gave them a wall it's right there in verse 21 and I'm gonna shout my way out of here this Sunday morning the Bible says God gave them a win because the Bible says and Moses uh, stretched out his hand uh, over the sea uh, and look at what the God I serve did the Bible says the God we serve uh, caused uh, the sea to go back uh, by a strong east wind stop, stop right there I don't want to lose nobody here this Sunday morning he gives them a strong east wind and if I had more time I tell you this Sunday morning that when Whenever you see that word wind mentioned in the scripture, the wind symbolizes or signifies God's Holy Spirit. 
and somebody here besides Tobias can testify when it seems like uh, you can't go any further uh, when it seems like uh, you're at a dead end uh, when it seems like uh, you can't make any progress uh, the God I serve uh, will dispatch his Holy Spirit uh, to give you the fuel uh, to give you the motivation uh, to give you the direction uh, or give you the location uh, that he needs you to go on uh, the Bible says uh, he sends them a win. But not only did the Bible say that God gave them a win, but watch the text. The Bible says he also gave them a wall. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm in the text this Sunday morning. He gives them a win, but he also gives them a wall. Because the Bible says, and I'm done this Sunday morning, right around verse number 22. The Bible says, and the children of Israel went uh, into the midst of the sea. Watch the text. Uh, upon dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them. And I need to tell somebody here this Sunday morning, hear me and hear me well when I tell you that the wind symbolized his spirit and his presence, but the wall symbolized stability and protection. Lord have mercy Jesus the wind symbolized his spirit and his presence but the wall symbolized stability and protection and when it seems as though you can't go any further I come to tell you this Sunday morning the God I serve will give you his spirit he'll give you his presence he'll give Give you stability, he'll give you protection so that you can continue to move forward. Anybody here besides the Bible is not ashamed to testify that there have been moments in your life when it seemed like you couldn't go any further. Some, somebody ought to say, that's me, preacher. Is there anybody here not ashamed to, to just testify and wave your hand wherever you are and let somebody know that I've had some spells in my life. I've had some seasons in my life. I've had some moments in my life when I didn't know where to go. I couldn't look behind me because the Bible says to forget those things that are behind you. I I couldn't look ahead because you really don't know what lies ahead. You couldn't look to the left because everybody on the left left your side. You couldn't look to the right because nobody on the right had the right attitude. The Bible will show you that when it seems as though life will cause you to not be able to go any further. The God I serve will give you his spirit. He'll give you his presence. He'll give you stability. He'll give you protection to keep moving forward. Look over and tell somebody, I don't got happy this Sunday morning, tell somebody this Sunday morning to keep going forward. And I'm going to leave you this Sunday morning. I'm going to leave you. I got a question I want to ask you this Sunday morning. How did God divide the Red Sea? How did God make a way out of no way? How did God cause the sea to divide at least half a mile long? How did God cause the Red Sea so that so many people I mean two to three million people could walk upon dry ground. How did God keep them from getting bogged down in the mud uh, all within one night? Can, can, can I tell you this Sunday morning? It was by uh, his omnipotent power. Uh, it was by uh, his grace and mercy. Uh, God is God. Uh, he's the Lord God of redemption. Uh, he can redeem who he chooses uh, he can deliver in a way he chooses uh, he can save whom he will uh, no matter what the problem may be uh, no matter how difficult it may be uh, God is able to deliver and I need to tell somebody I don't got happy this Sunday morning this is what I've discovered about the God I serve God will move heaven and earth God will override the very laws of nature
reach him if he needs to deliver somebody God will move heaven and earth he will override the very laws of nature and I've discovered that when it seems like you can't go any further the God I serve will make a way you ought to tell somebody and I'm going to leave you this Sunday morning he'll make a way if you're not ashamed somebody ought to type that on the screen as I bid you good morning God will make a way he, he'll divide the Red Sea he'll defeat the armies that are following you he'll give you more of his grace and mercy it's because of his omnipotent power it's because of his presence it's cause of his divine nature the God we serve will make a way can I leave somebody here this morning when I tell you this Sunday morning God told me to tell you to just walk in faith yes. matter of fact if the, if the young folks was a, was was with us this, this Sunday morning that there used to be a song that says walk it out talk to me somebody and, and I didn't tell somebody this Sunday morning when it seems like you can't go any further the Lord told me to tell you just walk it out just, just walk in faith just keep moving forward for the cause of Christ uh, and the God I serve, uh, he will deliver. Well, not only, my brothers and sisters, does the Bible tell you uh, that when it seemed like the children of Israel couldn't go any further, uh, the Bible says that many of them began to weep in fear. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that many times when we hit a dead end in life, when we lose a loved one, uh, when we don't know how, the God I serve will make a way. Uh, the Bible says that we will be just like the children of Israel and we will weep in fear uh, but the Lord sent me here on divine assignment to tell somebody this Sunday morning uh, that what you need to do is simply walk in faith and when you start Lord help me this Sunday morning when you start uh, to walk in faith the God I serve will show you uh, that you have uh, everything you need to make it through your trouble uh, the Bible says uh, that when, when the children of Israel uh, made it to the Red Sea, the Bible says, God told Moses uh, that you have everything you need uh, to receive the victory. Uh, because uh, God tells Moses uh, that what you need to do is uh, to just use uh, what's already in your hand. And uh, the Lord sent me here on the divine assignment uh, to tell somebody this Sunday morning uh, to just use what you got. Uh, somebody Lord, I feel you this Sunday morning. Somebody needs to know uh, that uh, you gotta be willing uh, to use what God uh, has given you. And uh, when you use what the Lord uh, has given you, when you use uh, what God uh, has placed uh, in your hand, uh, the Bible says uh, that God, uh, uh, he's able to do the rest. Is, is there anybody not ashamed to testify this Sunday morning that we serve a God who will do the rest? I feel like preaching this Sunday morning. Is there, is there anybody not ashamed to lift your hands? 
hands and testify this Sunday morning that you've done all you could do but you trust the God we serve to do the rest and the Bible says when this seam is low they couldn't go any problem when it seems as though they hit a dead end the Bible says they began to weep in fear but then the Bible says after God has spoken the Bible says they started to walk in faith but uh, I'm gonna leave you feeling and feeling uh, when I tell you uh, not only did they weep in fear, uh, not only did they walk in faith, uh, but uh, I'm gonna leave you feeling and feeling uh, when I tell you uh, they began uh, to worship uh, the God we serve uh, for His favor. They began to weep in fear. They began to walk in favor. But then, selling and filing, the Bible says they started to worship the God we serve for his favor. And I need to tell somebody this Sunday morning, have the God bring him through your Red Sea. Half the God uh, heals uh, your body. Half the God uh, forgives uh, your sin. Half the God uh, defeats your enemies. I come to tell you, uh, don't you forget uh, to worship uh, the God we serve uh, for his favor. Well, uh, somebody, uh, somebody may be saying, uh, preach a pastor. Them, uh, how do you know uh, that uh, they started uh, to worship uh, the God we serve uh, for his favor? Well, uh, because the Bible says, uh, the Bible says, uh, the Bible says uh, in chapter 15, uh, the Bible says uh, in verse number one uh, that when the God we serve, I brought them over when the God we serve I brought them through they began to sing songs to the Lord and they began to worship him for his favor they began to tell him thank you sir they began to give him all the glory they began to give him all the praise. Is there anybody out there not ashamed to worship and praise his name? Is there anybody out there not ashamed to worship and praise his name? Because he's worthy. Ain't he worthy?
maybe they will begin to sing that song that says nothing but the blood. I don't know what song they began to sing. All I know in the Bible said they began to sing. They began to sing a song. And I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters. I don't know how you feel about it this Sunday morning. All of us have hit points in our life much like the children of Israel when we felt like we couldn't go any further. Matter of fact, somebody is there right now. Somebody is there right now because of what you're dealing with. You, you, you've thrown your hands in the air and wanted to say, you quit, I just can't go any further. Well, can I tell you what the Lord told me to tell you this Sunday morning? Stop weeping in fear. Stop weeping in fear and start walking in faith and watch God do what no other power is able to do. And then, after, after he brings you over, because I come to tell you this Sunday morning, he will bring you over. Can, can I help somebody here? When he brings you over, because he will bring you over. You got to start the next chapter of your life just like they did in chapter 15, verse number one. They began to sing a song to God and worship Him for His favor. What a word from God this Sunday morning. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. In spite of our technical difficulties, thank you so much for worshiping with us and praising God this Sunday morning. Listen, listen, God is good all the time. And somebody know that all the time, God is good. I don't care what your situation look like, what your Red Sea may look like. Use what you got. I know that ain't good English, but that's good preaching. Use what you got. Use what God has given you. It might be a rod. It might be a stick. I don't care what God has given you. Use what you got and watch God do the rest. Tell somebody he will do the rest. Our ensemble is getting ready to give us our closing song this Sunday morning. If you're in need of salvation, please, ma'am, please, sir, reach out to us so that we can welcome you, extend to you the invitation God has already given over 2,000 years ago when Jesus said, come unto me and I will give you rest. Our choir, our ensemble is going to give us our closing selection. Every praise is due our God. Listen, I want to tell somebody the door of the church will be open on next Sunday. I'm so excited, enthused, elated of what God is doing, getting ready to do. We're asking all of our members, if you plan on being in attendance on next Sunday, the doors will open at 1015 and we want all of you to be seated by 1050, 1055 so things can be done decent and in order. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one of course. Every praise. Can you sing with us this Sunday morning? this Sunday morning. Sing that.
a deliverer. Somebody knows him to be a healer. Every praise is due our God. Deliver Yes, he is. That's what he is. God. Yes. Every praise. Jesus this Sunday morning. God, we thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for the mountains you move. Thank you for the mountains you help us to cross. And we thank you, God, for the Red Sea you cause us to conquer in our lives. God, and we confess this Sunday morning, all of us have gotten to a point where we felt like we couldn't go any further. Our natural response or reaction was to weep in fear, become frustrated at the point of places we were. God, we confess today that there's no need for us to weep in fear, but you want us to always have a moving forward mentality. Thank you for giving us the ability to walk in faith. And then, God, we thank you for how you use Pharaoh's army as an example in Scripture that if we trust you, if we continue to move forward, you will handle those who are on our track. Thank you for using Pharaoh's army as an example that you will defeat and fight our enemies. All we have to do is to trust you, use what we have, and move forward. And then, God, thank you for them showing us how to worship you for your faith. Now, God, as we leave this place but never your presence, we need more of you in our life to lead and guide us. And we thank you for being a God to lead and guide a God who's able to provide and protect. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, we want him to rest, rule, and abide with this thy people, now, henceforth, and forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Every praise is to our God. Let me hear you say that again with us this Sunday morning. Every praise, every word, every praise, every praise. Listen until the next Sunday. May the grace of God be with you. And we look to see our members be a practical 40 to 50 individuals next Sunday as we re-enter the sanctuary. Until then, may God continue to saturate your life with his divine Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Amen.